Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at Superbooth in Berlin, and with me is Dylan from Ableton. Hey, Dylan, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Excellent. And we are standing behind a large and very complicated rig, which you can't see very well on this camera at the moment. But this contains not only a laptop running Ableton, but also a Eurorack system, because Ableton are using this show to launch CV Tools, which that's is right. a way of tying Ableton into a modular synth. Yeah, that's right. How does it work? Okay, so CV Tools is a pack. I'll quickly show you on the screen here where the pack is. So if you browse into the pack section, it's currently in beta, so you have to sign up for the beta, but it will be coming out in the near future. So there's three instruments, uh, instrument for pitched uh, instruments, a rhythm generator that works both with modulars and with MIDI devices, and then a trigger and gate generator for generating pulses. Uh, there's also a collection of modulators. So there's um, the LFO and Shaper will be familiar to those that have used Live 10, but they also support CV. So they can map to parameters in Live and output it to the modular, which is really fun. There's an envelope follower, which takes audio input and then maps that into the modular or Live. That's really fun. And a CV input for taking stuff from the modular and controlling things in Live. So in effect, you've got two-way communication yeah. between your modular and your live. Right? Yeah, that's right. And so the way it works is uh, with a DC coupled audio interface. Now there's a range of interfaces that support that. Um, I'm using these Expert Sleepers modules. They hook up via these ADAC cables uh, to my RME interface. So a lot of interfaces have these extra ports that don't get used. And this is a nice way just to be able to plug and unplug the modular. You can also get uh, one that's in the rack or a lot of uh, UAD or um, MOTU interfaces are DC coupled as well as some of the sockets on the RME. For basic clocking and stuff, you don't even need a DC coupled interface, but as soon as you get into the more complex modulation, it's important to have that. Um, so there's a couple other things in here. Uh, in the utility section, there's a utility, which I'll show you later. And then two simple ones, which is clock in, clock out, which is kind of the fundamentals. So you want the band to play in time. Um, and clock output drives the modular from live. You can actually go the other way. I probably won't show you that because that's not how I use it, but you can have a sequence in your modular with tempo control controlling the playback of live, which is pretty cool. So, um, the oops, I'll just stand on my keyboard and make a cool sound, sorry about that. Um, so the first thing I'll show is the clock output module, which is this one here. It's really simple. You just choose a division and it has a clock out. Uh, it has a transport reset if you have a sequencer that has a reset option. Um, I'm using a Moog DFAM in my rig. This massive Euro rack is my personal rig, so it's kind of how I use it. Um, and so when I hit play in live, the DFAM starts. And the sequence in the DFAM is perfectly clocked to live. It's about as basic as it gets, but it's a pretty important piece. Um, because it's all of the communication between live and the modular is audio. So it's control voltage, but it's at audio rate. So it's really tight, no jitter, no lag, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's kind of the basic, is the clock. And then the second thing that's probably the most fundamental piece is the voice um, instrument. So that's uh, this one here, the CV instrument. And this is for doing like gate and pitch to control the voice in the system. Um, in its simplest form, when it's folded up like this, it's just gate out, pitch out, and then audio in. So the audio from the voice comes back in. You can hear I'm putting reverb and delay using the mixer and live onto that uh, instrument. And I can also put other effects and stuff after it too. So it gives you a, a great opportunity for post-processing. But inside the CV voice is also a whole lot of envelopes. Um, there's a mini version of this drawable shaped LFO, uh, MIDI expression, so like velocity and aftertouch and stuff like that. And those can be either output as CV, and there's also a chance to map these to things in live. So you can build these really nice like one instrument that's controlling the modular and some effects in live and sort of all going like So you're that. almost treating your modular like a device within live. It's pretty much how it works, yeah. And you can drag it around between tracks and because uh, I quite often track my modular. So I'll sequence it and then record audio and then, you know, kind of move things around and, and reprocess in different ways. Yeah. Wow, cool. Yeah. It, um, it really changes the way that you use the two together because it just feels... It's quite seamless to move between them, I guess, is the point. Um, one of the things that the, um, the important features of the instrument is that it uh, has a calibration routine. So it will, um, the expert sleepers modules are designed to output plus and minus 10 volts, which is what most modules expect for pitch. Um, but most modules, not all modules track perfectly. Um, and so the calibration routine goes through and tunes the oscillator, uh, makes sure that it'll tune correctly over a range and compensate for any 
like uh, tilt up or down in tuning. Um, also, if you have an interface, uh, like a normal sound card doesn't output 10 volts. But if it's DC coupled and you want to use it, the calibration will sort of tell you the range of octaves you can meaningfully cover with your interface, which is pretty cool. Very nice. So, um, I'll, so I'm not going to get too far into that, but what I will show you is maybe the modulation, because that gets quite interesting, actually. So this is the Shaper device in the LFO. These are probably familiar to those that have used Live 10. You can use them to map to stuff in Live. Um, and there's another device here, which is kind of an important one called Utility. So the Shaper and LFO could output their CV directly, but in this case, what I've done is I've mapped them into the Utility device. And currently, I'm, I am um, adding the shaped and LFO signals together, and you get this complex modulation shape coming out the other end. So even within Live, you can make it um, uh, relatively complex. And then I will spit that out. Let's find a spare output. What have I got? Number six. So I send it to the sixth channel on my modular here. I'll grab a cable. I'm going to patch that into the... Uh, volts per octave of my filter and now when I I'm gonna turn that up here up so now that modulation that's happening is coming from the transport and live so so you get these nice like synchronous patterns and stuff Oh, very neat. So yeah. as far as Live is concerned, these um, utility modules, they can live on any track in Live and they're transparent to audio within Live. Yeah, so the audio just goes straight through them. So you can kind of put them wherever you want. Um, and then they sort of reach out through the multi-channel routing that we included in Live 10 to route directly to the sound card outputs for the control. Yeah. And very the nice neat. thing about that is that that control voltage that I've got going on, I can not only map it to send it to the modular, but I can use it to map to things in Live. So here I can map it to the uh, reverb scene, for example. So now we'll get. And then I can map it to the. And you can also, um, that's a pretty simple example, but it's kind of more to show the idea that you can build these um, systems that influence the hardware and the software at the same time, which is quite cool. So can you map multiple CV modules to the same output on your sound card? Yeah, you can actually, because it's just audio, um, it'll just get added together. So you can actually, um, for example, with the clock, I have a button in my modular, and I'll sh this will bring me to an interesting and uh, good segue into the next thing I wanted to show you, actually. So not in this set, but normally the way that I have my rig is I have a button that um, switches between the clock generator, like this pulse, and um, like an audio follower. So if I want my modular to go really weird, I feed it some audio. And this, um, I'll show you, I'm going to perform a cardinal sin and play the Armin break, but I think that's okay. Um, so you can see on the screen that what Live is doing with that audio is extracting triggers, which you can use to drive a sequencer, and it's also extracting an envelope that you can use to modulate stuff. So you can kind of either influence the audio by sending CV in, or you can influence the modular by bringing the audio back out as like a source. Yeah. So properly two-way. Yeah. Really seamless communication. I quite often, so in that example, I have two devices that can send the clock. And I just MIDI map a button that switches, switches them on and off on different tracks. And that works totally fine. Wow. So the arpeggiator I was playing before is also like... Hang on, let's turn that. That's Live's arpeggiator. I've just MIDI mapped it. And it's sending out to the CV device. So you can kind of start to combine the bits together really easily in a way that, you know, I don't have an arpeggiator. I like arpeggiators. I miss my Juno 60s arpeggiator. So I've kind of built one with a MIDI controller and and what live is. Yeah. I can see this goes very, very deep indeed. I think so, yeah. It, it's um, My impression is that for a lot of people, that just that timing and that really good pitch tracking and the accuracy will be a large part of what's awesome about it. But when you see the guys that built it, uh, Skinner Box and some of the guys on our team using it, the stuff they're doing with the deeper modules is pretty impressive. There's a, um, the last couple of things, I guess I didn't really touch on them very much, 
um, but I'll quickly show you because they're quite important. One is just a simple device called CV triggers. And all this does is take, um, it takes MIDI and it turns it into triggers or gates. So you can sequence a drum pattern in live and have that come out as triggers. Now there's also this uh, quite cool device called the rotating rhythm generator, um, which is, it actually works with any MIDI instrument in live, it's, but it's like a modular style Euclidean and logic based rhythm generator. And then you can sort of rotate the patterns. So you can have a kick, snare, hi-hat pattern and you rotate it and the kick moves to the snare and the snare moves to the hi-hat and the hi-hat moves around, you know, this kind of thing. It's really sort of jamming fun kind of thing. Very neat. So this is all included in Live Suite, is that right? Yeah, that's right. If you, you need Max for Live. So if you have Max for Live, either as part of Live Suite or if you own Live Standard and Max for Live, then the pack is a free um, update. And it's just gone into beta now. So how soon do you think it will be available? We're hoping, um, so... Live 10.1 is pretty close to release. Uh, that's been in beta for a while. Um, CV tools will come out after Live 10.1 because there's some changes in there that it needs. Um, but yeah, we just have to see what the beta feedback's like. The thing about the modular world is there's, we've done a lot of testing and tried it with lots of rigs, but there are so many permutations or ways to use this stuff that um, we want to make sure that it's been tested with a whole lot of different rigs and different people's setups. Um, so hopefully not too far away, but at the same time, we're just going to wait till it's ready and then we'll, then we'll release it. Yeah. Nice one. Well, thanks for that, Dylan. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks, Sam.